We're still in chapter 22. Last week's topic about variable and absorption costing was all about fixed cost and variable cost and how they behave and how variable costing could be a good decision tool for certain types of decisions. And this is a continuation in that we're talking about break-even analysis, but it's also from chapter 22, which also means that it's about variable cost and fixed cost and how they behave. It's another decision tool that you could find useful in certain situations in a business setting. So let's talk about some of the things that I'd like for you to know this week and lifelong that you ought to be able to start knowing today and work on and refine all week long. First of all, I'd like for you to know what the break-even point is. Um, it's an important concept that we're trying to communicate. We sometimes work it in a way that the answer we get is expressed in dollars, and sometimes we work it in a way that the answer we get is expressed in units. We'll touch on both those today, but there's also an alternate formula for the one in units in the textbook that we'll kind of discover in some other exercises that we do this week. I'd like you to know something related to break-even that's not break-even. Uh, it's called target net income in this textbook. It's allowing in the break-even calculation itself for there to be a profit, not concerned with breaking even so much as earning a profit and being able to anticipate that and make decisions that would help us <coughs> earn that. I'd like for you to understand the relationships described on a break-even chart. Sometimes, if this is an important part of the evaluation process, we can draw this to scale and actually find it useful to read the information right off that graphical presentation. I'd like to talk about the, those relationships. Margin of safety is a concept that's directly related to break-even. Margin of safety is talking about the break-even point and the current performance. We'd like you to know margin of safety and be able to express it in dollars and as a percentage relationship. It's important as we analyze our company and see the results of the performance to be able to compare this to other significant points in time and to measure how well we're doing. And finally, but certainly not least, is a concept called the contribution margin ratio a very useful tool under certain situations. I'd like for you to see an easy way to remember the contribution margin ratio so that you could use it, a uh, reflex reaction kind of thing, this week and beyond this week. So, with these things in mind, and with this busy kind of end of semester mentality, I don't want it to feel like we're just giving you a bunch of formulas and pile on, now go memorize these. That is absolutely not what I want you to perceive. I would like for you to see the logic in these, see the benefit from these, see the simplicity in these, and be able to remember these beyond this week, and I'm serious about that. I think these are good tools. When we deal with them enough, I think that you're going to find that there are things that you can remember. And that's what I'm challenging you to do, is to look beyond the formula. Not see it as a formula, but to see it as something that you could benefit from. Now, too, too often, students overthink this, and I don't get quite the response that I want to. I'm about to ask you a really, 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 really simple question to which I would like a really, 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 really simple answer. Almost. Uh, uh, reflex reaction, don't think too much right this minute. Y'all with me here? So let's say that you bought a car for $5,000 and later you sold it to a friend for $5,000. How'd you do? Gain or loss? Let's go over it one more time. You bought a car for $5,000 and you sold it for $5,000 How'd you do? Gain or loss? Neither. neither. Say something other than neither. Break even? You're overthinking, and I ask you not to do that. So, how about you paid a dollar for that bottle of water, and you haven't opened it yet, and some friend of yours is thirsty, they're willing to give you a dollar for it. 
brandy class. She bought a bottle of water for a dollar and she sold it for a dollar. How'd she do? Gain or loss? <laughs> what part of don't overthink this do you not understand? <laughs> I bought a car for $5,000 and sold it for $5,000. How'd I do? Gain or loss? Why won't you talk to me anymore? Loss. Be quiet. So I paid $50 for a share of Walmart stock and I sold it for $50. How'd I do? Gain or loss? Are, are you just being smart with me? Or do you really not understand this? The answer consistently that I expected from you was you broke even. I know. A lot of people said it. I heard more wisecracks than I heard decent answers. And I don't know if you're playing games with me or you're serious right this minute. Um, this has gone over bad before, but it's never gone over this bad. And it went over really, really good this morning. <coughs> May I try once more? <laughs> I'm about out of examples. If you bought a car for $5,000 and you sold it for $5,000, did you gain or lose? You broke even. My point was that you knew something about break even before you walked in the room today. So I'm not teaching you a lesson from scratch as I do on a lot of other Mondays. I, I want you to understand that you understand the general concept here. And if you understand the general concept, then what we're going to do is even going to be easier than it was going to be already. This is something that we can wrap our hands around and understand. I'll also say on this screen or the screen before this that there's a little bit of math involved, a little bit of algebra, really, 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 really simple stuff. Those of you that have really good math skills might enjoy just the stuff we're going to do this week more than usual. Those of you that have poor math skills and are afraid to solve for one unknown have no need to panic because that was probably on the college entrance test and this is probably not going to be as hard as that. And apparently you passed that because you're here today. Did that make sense? We can get you through solve for one unknown if you have trouble with the algebra, okay? So let's talk about the break-even prayer. I tried to introduce you to it in a non-traditional way. How about words that go with that? Here's the official textbook or dictionary definition. The breaking point is the level of sales, which I can't overemphasize. It's the amount of sales. It's a top line income statement, not bottom line net income, but top line income statement concept. The level of sales at which revenue on the one hand is exactly equal to the cost and expenses we incurred to earn that revenue on the other. Do those words bear out your understanding of break even when you walk in the room today? Yes or no? If you bought a bottle of water for a dollar and sold a bottle of water for a dollar, you, you earned a dollar in sales revenue, but you had cost of a dollar exactly equal to that. Now, we can say these obligatory dictionary sounding words with a formula where sales is equal to fixed cost plus variable cost. And you weren't supposed to see the, there you go. The break-even formula is the point at which revenue earned is equal to cost incurred. Exactly. Is equal to. What part of is equal to do you not understand? Where sales on the one hand is equal to all the cost and expenses that you incur to earn it. 
Exactly. Now, the trouble is, costs behave differently. And because costs behave differently, we have to differentiate between the fixed portion of that and the variable portion of that. We learned last week, costs behave differently. And this is a continuation of that idea. Now, if you want to say sales equals variable cost plus fixed cost, are you going to get the same answer that I'm going to get? Yes or no? Yeah. Does it matter the order that we say the terms on the right side? No. Yes or no? No. I just have this really bad habit. I wish that I said variable cost plus fixed cost. But I don't know if I learned it or I just picked up the bad habit along the way. I say it fixed cost plus variable cost. We're going to get exactly the same answer. So let's talk about each of these components. There are some common mistakes that you make. Um, trap doors, tricks, things that you could miss if you weren't on your guard, paying attention. And one of those is the idea of sales altogether. Sales is the unknown. If you are in real life or you're in a textbook problem or exercise or even test question and it says the amount of sales is so-and-so and fixed costs are this and variable costs are this and la da 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 calculate the break-even point, your temptation would be, your temptation might be to plug in that level of sales as, oh that was given the problem, I, that goes in this blank. But that defeats the whole purpose. Look at the word definition again. What is the level of sales at which we would break even? It is sales for which we're solving the problem. What is the level of sales? Sales is X. Now we may do variations of this, but I'm talking about the pure break even formula. The question we're attempting to answer is what is the level of sales? We don't know. We should know fixed cost, however. Fixed cost we should have expressed in dollar terms already. If we've done a good job defining fixed cost, there it is. They don't change. Variable costs would be stated as a percentage of sales. Variable costs vary at every stage of production. Every level of production, I meant to say. If I were to graph the special relationship that variable cost had to sales, it might look like this. Imagine that it's going to be a graph where this line that I'm about to draw represents sales and this line I'm about to draw represents variable cost. When sales go up, variable costs go up. When sales go down, variable costs go down. When variable costs, I'm sorry, when sales changes at all, variable cost changes directly in proportion to them. Are you with me right this minute? Say yes or no. Yes. Then that's the way we're going to define it in this expression. Variable costs have a relationship to sales that we should be able to figure out and know. Some problems will tell you what it is. In one of your homework problems, maybe the very first one, I can't remember which, you're asked to figure that out. That percentage is variable cost divided by sales. If you know the numbers from an old income statement, you might be able to find that number and apply it to a new fact circumstance. It's usually about the same for your company. It stays close to the same over, over time, historically speaking. So, um, I don't know who this is. I'm going to pretend it's my aunt or my grandmother or your aunt or your grandmother. and. This may fall flatter than the I sold a red sports car for $5,000 story that we already experienced today. I don't know. I'm going to try it anyway. There was a time not very long ago when people like this decorated their home with what we in our family call whatnots. Uh, maybe a little brass thing on the coffee table or over on the bookshelf or on an end table. I got at least one knotted head just then and it was very affirming. <laughs> Thank you. I needed that. Because uh, I think most of the little brass scales are being sold in garage sales or have already been. But sometimes this aunt grandmother person would put grapes on one side and put grapes on the other side and try to get them to look 
kind of attractive and sometimes they'd want all the grapes that direction and sometimes they'd want them all the other direction. Y'all with me here? So far? Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> now what if we turn those grapes into the concepts revenue and expense? And depicted them as you see on the screen right this minute. What do you think about the name of the result of what you see on the screen right this minute? Revenue expense. I've heard some answers. I'm not sure I've heard the correct one. I'm not saying you didn't say it. I didn't hear it. What's this? Net income. Net income. Some say net income. What's this? Is this net income or net loss? Net income. I'm getting both answers, and that makes me happy. Because I'm getting you to think, I hope. Now, how am I measuring these two? It seems that we're measuring these two by weight at the moment. So which is larger, revenue or expense? It's not how high they are. It's how much they weigh, right? So which is heavier? Go. So is this net income or net loss? This is net income. And this is, ah, I think you're with me. But I'm not sure that's why we came to class today. I think the reason we came to class today was to try to see if we couldn't get these. Y'all with me here? Yes or no? <laughs> I think we're trying to get these things exactly equal to one. I don't want an excess revenue. I don't want excess expenses. I want to know the break even point. So I've got a continuing problem, one that lasts from this point until the end of class today. The, the reason I'm saying it is I'd like you to remember these facts up front. Think with me all hour long about what you're about to experience. We're going to build on it and show you the things from that first slide, the objectives we're trying to accomplish. Let's use the breaking formula. Sales equals fixed costs plus variable costs to find the break-even point in dollars based on this fact circumstance. Actual sales for our company are 200000 We sell each product for $100. <coughs> Fixed costs are $60,000. Variable costs are 60% of sales. Help me find the break-even point in dollars. Okay, look, eyes up just for a second. Just a quick show of hands. Who, if I called on you right this minute, is confident enough that you could say the break-even formula for me right now? Who thinks you know it? Good? Put your hands down. I want two of you to do it. Who's willing to say the break-even formula for me right now? I'm going to call on somebody. Show me that hand. Joe, say the break-even formula. X no, 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 no. The way you've learned it today in class. Sales, sales equals. equals ah, no numbers. Uh, formula. Thank you. Good answer. Tucker, say it for me. Sales equals variable cost or fixed cost. Doesn't plus matter. Plus variable cost. You can say them the other way. Let's all say it. The formula for determining break-even is sales equals fixed cost plus variable cost. Now let's plug in numbers. I need some help. Tell me, sales. If you know it, put your hand up. Let's go faster. Sales, right here. 200,000. Sales, Grant. 200,000. Sales, Brandy. Sales. Somebody had their hand up right here. Who was it? Was it you? When I ask the first question, oh, sales yeah. is 200,000. It says so right there in writing. Sales, come on, help me out. Tucker? X. Why, Tucker? Because it's sales break even, not just. If sales. you, it was a trick. If I could get you to fall for it today, you're less likely to fall for it later. Didn't I tell you I was going to ask you this trick question earlier, probably 10 minutes ago? Yes or no? Yes. You're, you're going to have that temptation. You need to understand what the question is. When you answer this question wrong, 
It's because you don't understand the question, the answer that we're trying to find. The whole idea of break even is what is the level of sales? We don't know. We're trying to find them. What is the level of sales at which we would break even? At which, when we prepare an income statement, net income is exactly zero. Not a penny of profit, not a penny of loss. What is the level of sales? Sales is X. Sales is the unknown. So, do we know fixed cost? New volunteer? Do we know fixed cost? How much? Can I just write that number in there? No teasing, no trick questions, no... I can depend on that. Fixed costs are $60,000 given in the problem. Do we know variable cost? You got the number? Hold up your hand, I want to know it. Here he is, Nick. $120,000. Eloisa. $120,000. Auditors on $120,000. Thank you for falling for that trick question. Are you listening to me right now? When sales are $200,000, variable costs are $120,000. How much are sales? We don't know. How much are variable costs? We don't know. Is anybody with me? Because... At every level, variable costs are going to be different. We're looking for a different level. We know what happens at two hundred thousand, or we're going to know in a few minutes. We might make money, revenue, or net income, or have net loss. But we're looking for that point of equilibrium where there's not going to be any profit, any loss, and whatever that unknown level is means that variable costs need to be determined at that level. Variable costs were stated in the problem to be 60% of sales. A relationship to sales. Now, would you reassure me that your algebra teacher taught you to solve a simple algebraic expression like this the same way my algebra teacher did back when the dinosaurs were on the earth? <coughs> I see three steps. I want to name them generically. I want concepts, rules, descriptions that fit every circumstance. And then I want that application to solve this expression. What's the first thing we need to do in order to solve this? If you know that generic expression, talk to me. Um, oh, well, I guess I don't know the exact name, but you should probably get the S's on both sides. I, I, that's a correct answer, and I'm going to shop just for a second for somebody that can say it. And if nobody can, then I'm going to tell you the name of that. Right there. Whoop, right behind you. You would subtract the variable cost. Um, That's true, but it's not generic enough. I'm looking for broader than that. Would you set the equation equal to zero? That's a question, and no. Uh -huh. Isolate the variable. Isolate the variables, what my algebra teacher called it, and apparently Shane's did too. And I doubt if it was the same person. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> This is isolate the variable. Now, I heard lots of good descriptions for what that means. You see, I don't think you've broken it down quite this simply, elementary. You've gotten all beyond that, and you know how to do it, but sometimes I think it's a good idea to think about what you're doing and why you're doing it. There are S terms scattered all over the page. We need to round them up, get them in one place, and perform an operation. Isolate the variable. Now somebody describe it. That back row description I heard a while ago? Uh, just, yeah, you subtract the S on the, or S on the right side, you subtract the S on the left side. Oh, that's not the way I'd do it. Maybe you meant this. One of the things you know about algebra is that you've got to do the same thing to both sides of the equation, which reminds me of the first day in accounting. I think I'm talking now. You got your turn. <laughs> first day of accounting, we did opposite sides to the accounting equation, or op uh, same thing to opposite sides of the equation, same thing to opposite sides of the equation, or plus and minus on the same side. But we had to do two things to it. Now, there's an S term over there and one over here. And if you do the same thing to both sides, since that one says plus, we're going to subtract 60% S from the right side which means we need to subtract 60% S from this side, do the same thing, let's don't leave out any steps this first time. We'll take shortcuts all week long. 
But this is my opportunity to make sure we're all on the same page, starting, building on the same foundation. Is this a correct expression for what just happened when we isolated the variable, say yes or no? Yes. Second step. Anybody but Shannon. Tell me what the second step is. What did your algebra teacher say about this? I don't know if I can trust you or not. That's what I said. That's what I said. That's exactly what I meant. Yeah. That's what you meant. There's a difference in what I meant and what I said. I said the .60 asked from the asked. You didn't say that. We videoed it. If you'd like to stop by and see the video, we'll all listen to it some other day. Or I can take a vote of the class right now if you'd like. <laughs> Are you going to talk to me? Yeah. What is the second step, generically speaking? Um, you, sub you would subtract the number and leave the variable, variable by itself. That is correct, but that's not the ger generic name for it. Broader than that, somebody say what he just said. Now you're all afraid to. <laughs> Where is he? Right over here, Paula. Factor out the cone. Factor out the cone. And then find the square root and... You even just factor something. Maybe that's what we did, but that's not what my algebra teacher said. I'm looking for what my algebra teacher said. Shane, am I going to have to depend on you? Combine terms? Combine like terms. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> did you see this online no. before you came to class? No. <laughs> Combine like terms. Yeah. Now, how are we going to do that? <laughs> who, who's, who, who would allow me to interview you? <laughs> Paula? How many S's is this? One whole one. One hundred percent of one. Yes? And how many S's is this? Some. This is a whole one too? Uh-uh. This is a partial one. No, this is a whole one. That's a fractional part of one. That's a sixty percent of one. This one's smaller than this one. And we're going to combine. Right, Paula? And when we combine them, we're going to be left with, we're going to say 0.4 S is equal to, 40% S is equal to $60,000. If you're with me right this minute, say yes. yes. There are three steps. Isolate the variable, combine like terms. And the third step is, could you raise your hand, anybody but Shane, and tell me this? Woo! Solve. Solve. Thank you. <laughs> what would you have said if I'd have called on you, Shane? I hadn't thought about it yet. Oh, right, right. So, solve. I wanted you to get all three of them right. I need a volunteer. Help me. Explain this to me really, really fast. Here it is. You would divide both sides by uh, 0.4 or 40%. I'm trying to teach you this lesson. And one of the things that goes along with the lesson is to teach you to be on guard and not make some of the common mistakes that I saw read. Here's the common mistake right now. Students who aren't on their toes or are under pressure, or not thinking clearly, or don't understand it well enough, will say, oh, 40%, this is multiplication, okay, we'll multiply this times this, and say the answer is $24,000. Did you follow me in your brain right then? 60% times 40, 60, uh, 60,000 times 40% is 24,000. I'm asking you to apply reason to your answer. Do a little income statement in your brain. Put a good heading on it. Say that sales are $24,000 and reduce sales by 60% of themselves and get some number and then subtract out fixed cost of $60,000 greater than the amount of sales alone, not even considering variable cost, and get zero. Did anybody understand what I just said? That just, that just doesn't cut it. That's not enough. That's not what you said. This is multiplication. How can I remove this? Divide that by both sides. Divide 40% into this side and get S. Divide 40% into this and get $150,000 has been suggested. I need auditors. The break-even point is $150,000. So let's do one of those imaginary income statements again. Good head. Sales of $150,000. Oh, well, let's don't do an imaginary. Let's do the real thing. What the heck? <laughs> let's subtract out $90,000 and call them variable cost. What's the name of this subtotal? Speak. What's the name of this subtotal? 
That's contribution margin. I'm surprised it took so long to get it out. Reduce that by fixed cost. That's net income of, everybody said? Zero. Zero. Isn't that the point? When sales are $150,000, net income is zero. Who's with me right this minute? Let me see. Hands up. Please. Good. The break even formula. The level of sales at which you break even. So, break even in units, sometimes with the right information, we can work from break even in dollars to break even in units easily. Sometimes there's a formula in the book that's a shortcut method that some of you will feel comfortable with and want to use. Sometimes you have to use that alternate formula in the book if this little tidbit of information is not available. The tidbit of information I'm talking about is the unit sales price. We know that these goods sell for $100 each. And if you take the amount of the answer we got a minute ago, break even, and divide by the unit sales price, you'll get the number of units required. What do we get for break even? This numerator is? Everybody that knows said? 150,000 divided by the unit sales price is? $100. $150,000 divided by $100 is? 1,500 units it takes. 1,500 units sold will cause you to break even. Some managers think like that. Some managers want to know that information. Some managers have got that number all the time, track it in their mind every day, adding to it, looking for the day they break even and know they're on the plus side when they get beyond that during that month. It's a good thing to know. Now, you and your roommate have a lot in common. You talk a lot. We hours of the morning, you're dreaming, scheming, sharing things that about your futures that you would like to share with one another. And all of a sudden you think that you have so many of the similar interests that you go, well, let's just let's start a business. Let's go into business together and let's break even. <laughs> Is that how that late night talk went? <laughs> At least you caught on to one thing I said today. <laughs> no. We've spent how long in class today to learn the break-even point? Is this some magical thing to devoutly to be wished? I don't think so. So could we talk about some others that are related to this, some spin-offs that would be of more benefit to us than knowing break-even? Like target net income. Target net income is just this publisher, these authors, terms for building in some profitability. So maybe it is, I want to sell the same number of units that I sold last year, I want to make the same amount, but I'm going to do such and such to it. Or I'm going to expand the plant and it's going to cause fixed costs to go up. What's it going to take me to break even? Or what's it going to take me to make a little bit of profit on this? So we can build in a profitable element. We use the basic formula and just change it to include target net income. So here's a simple one. Let's say that you want to increase the current net income by $20,000. Well, the problem with that is we don't even know what the current level of income is. So let's do us an income statement. You say we already did one. We did an income statement for break even when sales was $150,000, remember? Let's do us a quick income statement with the current level of sales. How much are we selling right this minute? Somebody talk to me. I'm not sure I heard the right answer. Who said it? 200,000. 200,000, Nathan. We have $200,000 in sales right this minute. When we have $200,000 worth of sales, what costs do we incur? We incur 60% in variable costs. We incur $60,000 in fixed costs. If we had an income statement under these conditions, we'd see that we are making $20,000 right this minute. Are you with me? Say yes or no. Yes. I felt like I lost you. I gotta have you with me. Now, revisit the question. I don't wanna make $20,000. I wanna make $20,000 more than $20,000. So I'm gonna have this little income statement shrunk to fit on this side of the screen as a reminder. 
so that I can give you some graphical presentation of the goal we have here. When sales are 200,000 as they are now, we make 20,000. But we've been asked to increase net income by 20,000 to 40,000. Y'all with me? Is this the easiest problem we're going to work all week? So we want this to go up by 20,000. We just make that go up by 20,000. How about, there you go. Pretty simple stuff, huh? You don't think that's simple? <laughs> what? Nathan? It's simple but wrong. What's wrong with it? It's not going to add up to 20 because you saw your variable cost. Tucker? As the sales go up, variable costs go up. Do we make 100% on every dollar? No. No. When we sell something at the cash register and take in a dollar, a big portion of that is gone in a hurry to cover the variable cost. We don't make full profit on every... If you know a business where we make full profit on every dollar, tell me I want to invest. <laughs> in fact, I'll go in partners with you. It, it's just not going to happen. It's, no, this is a hoax. It's not that simple. We've got to include the variable cost. So we still have the objective of this being $40,000, but we've got to go back and revisit the formula. How about the break-even formula but include some profitability? The break-even formula including this target net income. Book's term. Let's plug in what we know. Sales. X. Sales? Y'all gonna fall for that a few more times before you learn your lesson? We don't know. We were just asked to find the level of sales at which net income would be $40,000. What is the level of sales? Do we know fixed cost? Yes. Sales. Can't hear you. Do we know variable cost? Yes. Sam? 60 percent yes. Yes. Target net income. Forty thousand. Forty. Forty thousand or forty thousand. Forty thousand. I think we want to make forty thousand. We want to make twenty more than we're making. I think we want to make forty. So I think it's the unknown is equal to fixed cost plus variable cost plus this desired level of operating income. Forty thousand dollars we want to make. Let's isolate the variable. S terms on both sides. Subtract 60% S from both sides. You've got 40, you've got 60%, uh, you see it. Equal to fixed cost <laughs> and target net income. Combine like terms. A whole S minus a fractional part of an S is 40% S. 60,000 plus 40,000 is, everybody said? 100,000. Solve. Divide both sides by 40%. Divide this side by 40%, you get S. Divide that side by 40%, you get a little bit louder. 250,000. 250,000 in sales ought to make net income 40,000, which would be 20,000 higher. Are you just going to accept that as your right answer and move on? I'm the curious sort. I gotta know it's right. Especially if I'm gonna hand that report to my boss and make my boss look bad in the board of trustees meeting. Did you hear it? I don't wanna get to the board of trustees meeting and my boss look bad because it was wrong. Let's do a little income statement. When sales are 250,000 and you reduce sales by 60% variable cost, 60,000 fixed cost, you get an income of $40,000, just like we were asked to determine. So sales are $200,000, we break even. Now, excuse me, when sales are $200,000, we make $20,000 in profit. When sales are $250,000, we make $40,000 in profit. But it's not a one-to-one -one ratio because of variable cost. I'd like for you to know a little bit about a break-even chart. 
when I draw a breaking chart, I start with traditional X and Y axis. But I also re realize the limitations of our factory. The most we can produce. The most we can sell. And I turn this X, Y axis into a box. The rest of that is to remind me I've got limitations. I can only produce and sell within my range of opportunity. I, can, I have a maximum. The sales line could be as little as zero. The sales line could be as much as full capacity I can produce and sell them all. When you draw the sales line, it cuts this box in half and describes every level of sales that we could achieve. Every number's on there, from zero to whatever this one is, to whatever that one is, every amount of revenue that I could earn is there. Describe for me what costs I incur at zero sales. On the back row? Fixed costs. At zero sales, I have no variable cost. I only have fixed cost. Now, we can call them total cost and leave the formula the same, but my point is variable cost would be zero. It's only fixed cost for which we're accounting at the moment. Let's put a dot right there to depict the amount of fixed cost that we incur. At zero sales, fixed cost are total cost. I'd like to know total cost at full capacity. Total cost at full capacity are fixed cost plus variable cost, just like they were here, but there we're going to have variable cost, and this isn't to scale, and in real life we'd want it to be, for it to be a useful tool, but I'm going to put a dot there to represent total cost, fixed, and variable. And then suggest that you use a ruler to connect those dots. Several things we could observe from this. It's the total cost line, the amount of cost that we would incur at every level of sales. The point at which those two intersect is the break-even point, that point of equilibrium we've been talking about all day today. The point at which revenue earned is equal to cost and expenses incurred. But not only that, we see to the right of that the amount of income that we would earn when sales are greater than costs. Or the amount of loss that we would incur when revenue is less than the cost and expenses we incur. And when done graphically, you can even measure this distance and know the amount of net income and it could be a useful tool for you, for the manager. A breaking chart. Another important concept in this whole subject area related to break even is something called margin of safety. And this is a quote from the book. The definition of margin of safety in the book says, is the difference between actual sales and sales at the break even point. Well, we'll start with that one and we'll try to get you to understand the concept and we'll see if we can improve it any. The difference between actual sales and sales at the break even point. So here's the the break even chart that we just learned about, perhaps. And here's the break even point. Let's say that we're actually achieving that amount of sales represented by that dot. So this distance measured on that graph, the difference between actual sales and sales at break even, we would refer to that cushion, that excess, is the margin of safety. The amount by which sales can decline before we incur a loss. What about the expression safety? A positive feeling or a negative feeling? Positive. Margin of safety feels good, doesn't it? We're operating at higher than the break-even point. Margin of safety. That's good. Okay? Let's start over and say that sales is where I've drawn it. How y'all feel? 
Does this feel safe? <coughs> no, so good. The authors say the difference between the difference between actual sales and sales at break even is the margin of safety. I reject that. I don't think so. I think we ought to make it be a positive number. I think it has to be the excess, not the difference between. I think it has to be the excess of, the excess of sales over sales that break even is the margin of safety. Now, I felt like I lost the class this morning when I did this. What, what you seem to understand in words and relationships and concepts, I'm about to turn into what looks more like chemistry experience. It's just my way of writing it down. Don't get blown away by this, okay? We want to know the margin of safety in dollars. We want to know it in units, or as a percentage, excuse me. So I just use some things to abbreviate the names. The margin of safety in dollars is actual sales minus sales at Ricky. It's not chemistry nor a rocket science. The excess of actual sales over sales at break even is the margin of safety in dollars. And if we want to know that as a percentage, we're going to take that same concept and call it the numerator in this fraction, same same, and divide by actual sales. You're going to be wondering this week, should I divide by actual sales or sales at break even? The answer is, Actual sales. It's good coffee when you talk, folks. Well, I just calculated our margin of safety this month, and it's up 5% of what it was last month. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm serious. You're going to write me back one of these days. Guess what we talked about in the coffee room today. <laughs> so let's see if we can do it in this problem. When I read you this problem at the beginning of the hour, we didn't know these two things that we know now. Could you refresh my memory? How about current net income? Do we know net income right now? Yes. Say it. It's more than one person say it? Yes. Flim, flim. We know current net income is 20000 Do we know the break-even point right this minute? You're mumbling. Nathan, I think I can dismiss the rest of the class and you and I have a nice conversation. Thank you. So what if I wrote a problem to include those two facts that we now know and just put it in sentence format? These are the same facts that we began at the beginning of the problem, but now we know current net income is $20,000 and the breaking point is $150,000. I want to know the margin of safety in dollars and the margin of safety in units. Do y'all just want to copy it down? Or would you like to think of me real quickly and solve this? Come on, help me find the facts. The margin of safety is the actual level of sales, say a number, 200,000, minus sales at break even, say, say that number, 150,000. That's a margin of safety in dollars of 50,000. Thank you very much. So you already know it. That is $50,000. And we want to express that as a percentage. So we're going to divide that answer we just got. $50,000 is the numerator. And $200,000 is the denominator. $50,000 divided by $200,000 is, anybody got it in their head? Or on a calculator? Say 25%. 25%. The margin of safety is 25%. Just as a relation thing, what would we want? That number to be higher or lower? Higher. The higher the better. Now, I didn't get the contribution margin ratio, probably because it took us so long to decide whether we gained or lost on selling that car, but <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting concept and I wish I had time to share it with you. Look this week for the definition of contribution margin ratio. Have a nice day and a nice week. <laughs>